dear ones, I'm Cryon, a magnetic service. It may sound cryptic, but as it is above, so it is below. And the fractals of time are the same, no matter what the time is. And the patterns of the large are the patterns of the small. And in that there is a secret. And the biggest secret of all, when it comes to these kinds of statements, is what is being discovered within human consciousness. For human consciousness is a player in the physics of everything. It cannot be discounted. It must be in the laws of physics, and it will be. For it is the catalyst that often can change that which we say is the relationship between the parts. All cryptic right now for you. I want to give you some history. And the history is of astronomy and physics. In order to point out something that is extremely real, it can come right home to your own body. It's fascinating for some. It's science, it's real. An astronomer, a female astronomer named Vera Rubin made a discovery many years ago. And she looked at the Andromeda galaxy, very similar to your own and studied it for years slowly and something occurred, a discovery, amazing. She discovered that all of the stars went around the center of that galaxy at the same identical speed. Now that is not what happens in your solar system. In fact, it flies in the face of Newtonian science, or Kepler. All of the things that you base the motion of matter on was wrong. And when she discovered it, she handed it over to the community. And they studied it to confirm and validate she was right. Here's where it gets fun. For in physics and astronomy, what you've had for decades and decades are rules of physics that you watched happen over and over. You use them to fly to the stars, to the, to the asteroids, to the moon, all of the mathematics that you use based on Newton, based on Kepler, then you look at another galaxy and realize it's just like yours, something you could not measure because you're within it. She saw in a faraway galaxy, not too far, very close actually to you. And so what they did with this information is to say they have discovered a piece and a part of Newtonian science they never knew. Look at what they've done. They've taken what they know and have altered it to fit the rules of what they see. And that became the invention of dark matter. There had to be something that they didn't see which was altering what they know to be, which is Newtonian and Kepler science. The invention of dark matter therefore became something, an invention, because they 
didn't know what they didn't know. Vera, in the last 10 years of her life, started to object. Here she was the one who exposed this wonderful idea of dark matter. And yet she started to object. She separated herself from the males. And she started to proclaim what she believes she discovered was new physics. Something that had never been seen before. So don't alter what you know. Go to what you don't know. Take a look at something that never was revealed before. A relationship between the parts of the center of a galaxy doing something that would literally entangle all the stars together so they rotate like a plate. All the same speed, relative. To this day, no one has listened to that. But she knew before she passed over that she had discovered something that nobody knew about yet. Something new that was the relationship between the parts of a galaxy. As above, so below. For that relationship, dear ones, goes right to atomic structure. Physics is physics. Big physics and little physics echo one another. They're fractals of themselves. And you don't get something completely and totally different simply because it's large. And in between this huge and small, in between the rules of the fractals, is the human being. And in the human being, I will say yet again, the secret to everything you want. And what I mean by want, that would be longer life, health, peace, balance, joy, benevolence. All of these things, the secret is the relationship between the parts. And now you have to start looking at one of the parts you never thought was a part. Define consciousness. What is it? I will give you a non-technical definition of consciousness. The consciousness of a human being what comes out of your mouth? High or low? It's in the expectations of everyday verbiage and language, everyday thoughts. Whether you expect the worst, whether you complain, whether you're not happy with things, or you're never happy with things. Or whether you look at the world differently, and you see that which is benevolent because you can have peace in understanding a bigger picture. When somebody stands in front of you and calls your names, there may be obscenities. You look at them and you say, I see the God in you. I'm sorry you're having a bad day. But that's the truth. That is the truth. That is a basic beautiful, sacred truth. They have the same peace of God you do. And by choice, they have chosen a consciousness which is difficult. Difficult for you to see and for them to be in. And when you look at it, the relationship of the parts between your soul and their soul can intertwine for a moment. And in a way, they can feel that which you send to them, which is love, understanding, benevolence, in the process of them gesticulating and calling your name. And that, my dear friends, is spiritual maturity and balance and understanding. That's what you strive for. The relationship between the parts is the secret for long life. And the parts are between consciousness and the soul. 
It is the extension of the channel last night. But it's more than that. This coherence that you talk about is very real. It's a harmony. A harmony that is beyond that which is on paper or on the screen or numbers. It's a harmony that is felt and owned. You own it. And it's not just for a moment. Mothers, you've all felt it. Definition of pure coherence. Mom looking into that infant's eyes at birth comes out of you opens its eyes given to you and you look upon the face of lineage of you and for a moment there is a hundred percent coherence between you and your child the soul that has just come out of you Is it possible to duplicate that? Dear ones, that is exactly what we want you to duplicate. Could you develop perhaps an exercise? I don't want you to try to look in the mirror and open your eyes and do this. That don't work. That doesn't work. It's too linear. Way too linear. Instead, perhaps you could look inside yourself and see the child that was there. For all of you were there. And in that moment, I want you to see your soul, which is old and has infinite wisdom as part of the creative source, looking at you for the first time in that human body. And feel the coherence between being fresh, new, young, just here, and the soul which is old, that is also you. And the relationship for the parts for that moment is beautiful, compassionate, coherent, joyful, laughing. Welcome back. Here we are again. Let's go do it. And if you can imagine such a thing, from the depths of that which is your compassion, desire, and wisdom for balance, you will invoke the inner child within, and you will start a coherence with yourself. You'll be able to love yourself clearly, because all you'll see is that new and fresh you. The soul does not age, only the body ages. The soul does not. And so the freshness that was there is still there. Regardless of what, is, what has happened in your life, regardless, it doesn't matter. You can go to that place of freshness and newness and compassion and love and rekindle it. This is how a human being begins to love themselves. There has to be a recalibration of some sort beyond just that of wanting it or talking about it or verbalizing it. You gotta own it. And it's there as a resource to be owned. Imagine if you could rewind the clock just for a moment you looked into the eyes of your mother but when you looked into the eyes of your own soul an ancient wise wise old soul and for an instant you looked at one another and there was full total coherence joy 
compassion, benevolence. You recognized each other. Here you are again in a new biological body ready to start anew. And there is that which would recognize one with the other and the relationship between the parts is perfect. What's different now? Age? Things that have happened? What's different now? Are you starting to react perhaps to that which is around you? It's made you angry? Are you frustrated? Do you have anxiety over what you cannot control? Do you realize that all of those things are your choice? That's the consciousness of free choice. And in that free choice, you have that which is possible to do whatever you want with it. Totally in control. In that, you can change what comes out of your mouth. You can change that which you think. You can start to exercise the muscle of compassion and benevolence. And when you do, dear ones, it starts to create a coherence with that which is your soul. Some say it's your heart. That ancient part of you which knows all. That's then what creates the peace. That's then what slows the chemistry of aging. That's what keeps the diseases from attaching themselves to you. It goes way beyond that which is your brain. Consciousness is not necessarily something that is generated from the brain alone. It comes from that which is the relationship between the parts of the human being. That which you think, that which you've been told, that which is in the synapse and that which is in your heart. How do things work? How have you been told they work? Do they have to be forced? Do they work with complaining? And the answer is no. And you know better, and you know that. And yet the habits are there, are they not? Back to the message of last night, but beyond it, way beyond it. If the secrets of physics, all physics is the relationship to the parts, one with another, then the secrets to all that you wish in a DNA that can be mastery is the relationship to the parts you think and who you are the ancient part of you which is the soul the current part of you which is the consciousness of the human who you are the closer together they become the more you train that which is in the pineal and the heart and the brain to be closer to the ancient benevolence of the soul the closer they get the more perfect the coherence becomes and in that coherence is magic. That's what allows you to live hundreds of years. There'll come a day when coherence, or something they call coherence, is taught from birth. And in that, there is the cognization, the belief, the understanding that consciousness is a player on the field of physics. The secret to humanity that will not war is coherent. The secret to humanity without disease is coherence. Coherence between the parts of the human being a balance between that which is emotional, intellectual, a balance 
between that which is very esoteric, called the soul, and very linear, called the brain. When that balance is achieved, dear ones, that's when you start feeling you belong here. That all is well here. And that when those issues occur, as they always will in duality, you have perfect solution. You understand them. You know them. You can smile. This or something better. I'll get through this. I always do. Not all humanity will be alike. There will always be those coming in, learning. There will always be those above who have greater experience than you. There will always be issues to solve between you. And that's the point, because solution will be far easier with coherence. As above, so below, as the large is the small, you take the issue of humanity and billions of souls working together a relationship between the parts that has more coherence creates peace on earth. Relationship between the parts creates trade which makes sense, politics which changes and wants to improve, benevolence being the goal and the issue, compassion being something that is understood as the goal between relationships. It's coming. You live in a black and white earth, a black and white reality, and color is coming. I've said it before. It's not just in Israel. It's in the relationship between the parts of you and you. Do you know how much you're loved by you? You're not the greatest lover on the planet. It's your soul and your consciousness. And that creates such comfort that you can go from place to place smiling with how good you feel and how happy you are with life regardless of the spinning around you, regardless of the drama around you, regardless of low consciousness all over the media. Because you know better. Because you know a truth that has hidden for years the relationship between the parts and the answer to peace on earth and peace within you as above so below it may be cryptic to you now but just wait there will be a scientist someday a new Tesla perhaps a new Einstein perhaps that looks for the relationship between the parts of everything. The formulas will snap into place and consciousness will be the catalyst. It's coming. It has to. That's the track that you're on. There are still those who cannot see the track. They look beyond in the future and they say, it's not happening, you won't be here. It's going to fail. No human's going to make it. And that's only because the reader goes out and doesn't see what's here. They see something new and they don't recognize it. They say, there's no humanity in 50 years. You won't make it. Not understanding. That's right. There won't be the kind of humanity that's here today. It will have graduated to a new level, even within two generations, three, Four, you won't recognize it. The reader goes out and sees nothing they recognize because it's better than it was. They've never seen it before. It doesn't compute. They don't see what they expect. And so they come back and they say, well, you didn't make it. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. You made it in such a way that they don't recognize a world of peace. They don't recognize a world that's starting to have confluence of quality. They don't recognize the thing because they're not here yet. I say it again. 
go back 50 years and ask the question, how is your Wi-Fi? And they'll say, we don't know what you mean. And they say, well, okay, well, Wi-Fi is generated from that which is your internet. How is your internet? And they'll say, we don't know what you mean. They'll say, oh, well, uh, that's because, uh, how, is your, how is your computer? How fast is it? And they'll say, we don't know what you mean. That's three layers removed from their reality. And you're asking them about a Wi-Fi, and they have no idea what a computer is. Do you understand? In 50 years, you won't recognize it. It's not just the technology of machines. It is the high technology of consciousness that is on its way to changing this planet so those right now who go out and take a look at it can't even see it because they don't know what a Wi-Fi is. Three steps removed from what's coming. I hope this isn't too cryptic. For you to understand, no one can see it if they've never had it. If it's never been experienced, you don't know what humanity looks like working at 44%. You just don't. You don't know what benevolence looks like if you've never had it. Can you imagine a planet that works together? Can you imagine a political system that isn't angry with each other? No. How's your Wi-Fi? It's coming in ways you don't expect. It's coming in channeled systems that you've never seen. It's coming in inventions that will change everything you do. That's what's in the future, unseeable by so many who are so proud of being able to go and see what they see. I give you this news so you'll have an understanding of perhaps what you'll hear even through channeling. Let the purity of this message not be lost. You have free will to accelerate it or slow it down. That is free will. There may be some obstacles you have to get through. Humanity but you will get through them because the ball is rolling. The snowball is rolling down the hill and there's no trees in sight for it to hit. How fast it goes depends on the physics of gravity, which you can control <laughs> with consciousness. That's a metaphor. That's all I'll say now. The relationship between the parts of you is the secret to peace within you, to peace within humanity, and an accelerated, graduating Earth. Let it be. And so it is.